Hey guys, welcome back to another video. It's Shay. As I've been showing a lot more of my artwork and art practice, I realized that I've never really talked about the supplies I use, like my paints, pencils, tablets, sketchbooks. So I just wanted to share a bit more and hopefully give you guys some ideas or inspiration in your own art practice. I'll have everything, I'll hopefully have everything linked down below, but a lot of this is like really old supplies, so I'm not sure if I can find everything. But make sure to check out the description. And another preface, you don't need the fanciest and best art supplies to make great art. A lot of what I share is typically stuff I found around my house growing up and it's just stuck with me. And sometimes using cheaper supplies is better mentally because it doesn't feel like you're using up like a really good supply on just doing some sketchbook work. So yeah, you don't need the best supplies to make good art. Just want to preface that. These are just the things that I use and I hope it gives you some ideas or helps you out with finding new art supplies. Also, feel free to comment down below your favorite art supplies and what you like to use. I would love to know. I'm interested into getting more into gouache paint, so if you have any specific brands you like, let me know too. Um, but yeah, also I wanted to announce that I am doing a sticker giveaway. Yeah, let's go, finally. But yeah, we're doing a giveaway for hitting 20 20,000 subscribers here on my channel as well as almost 70,000 followers on my Instagram, which is ridiculous. But yeah, I just wanted to celebrate doing a giveaway um, and also possibly doing a live stream further down the line, but I haven't figured that out yet. For this giveaway, all you have to do is subscribe to my channel and follow me over on Instagram on the link down below, as well as I have a giveaway post on my Instagram. And all you have to do is just leave a comment on there. It can literally be anything like an emoji or like what you ate for breakfast this morning. It doesn't matter. I'll be choosing through a randomizer of those usernames from that post and picking a winner next Friday, I believe. So that is, that is Friday, August 11th, 2023. And yeah, once the giveaway is over, I'll just be sending these guys out to one of you guys. If you're um, below the age of 18, make sure you get your parents' permission first. I don't want you to end up winning the stickers and then not being able to have their permission to send your address. I just wanna keep things safe and fun and just get these stickers out to one of you guys. So yeah, make sure to get your parents' permission. Okay, be good. All right. Back to the video. Also, I just wanted to quickly mention that a lot of the links down below are links to Blick Art Supplies. They are affiliate links, which means that I get a percentage commission from the purchase if you buy anything. No extra charge to you. It just helps me out a ton. But yeah, just wanted to disclose that. Okay, first and foremost, we'll be starting off with sketchbooks. Um, this has to be like the most frequent question I get asked on all of my videos and all over on Instagram. I try to lean more on the cheap side so I don't feel bad for wrecking them with like horrible drawings. So some of my favorites include, I have it somewhere. Okay. So these are the Pentalic Travelers sketchbooks. I have a tour of this one up on my channel if you wanna see it more in action. But if you're in the US, they actually sell these at Walmart the last time I checked for a really great price. I got this mini one for like $3 or something and the larger one for like seven or eight. And I bought like three of each of them just cause I thought it was such a good deal. And I draw a lot. So I love the soft covers and the way it like easily like lays flat on the desk. It's really great. The paper isn't that high quality quality but you're not really paying for like high quality paper it's more just like paper to just like get some ideas out and sketching and doodling which is what I personally use sketchbooks for so I don't really care about the paper quality as long as it can hold like a pen as long as it can hold a bit of ink maybe a bit of watercolor or gouache or just some pencil I'm happy so not like the heaviest grade of paper not like the best quality of paper but it's just ideal for sketching and maybe some ink drawing so yeah there's those and then hopefully I'll be finishing this one soon i'm like almost done with it i couldn't find it for like a couple days so i would like kept on like reaching to draw in it i was like where did it go but now i have found it and i need to finish it off so i can move on to another one but yeah i recommend these sketchbooks for the type of people who use sketchbooks as just a place to draw. It's a minimal ink work and maybe some like light watercolor in it. They, the paper doesn't really hold up very well to wet medium. It's more just like dry, like pencil um, pen, but it does what it needs to for me. I just have to, I just like to use it to, to put scribbles and thumbnails in it. Um, I don't do a lot of finished work in my sketchbook. So it's really great for just uh, casually drawing and sketching. So yeah. 
Also, I forgot to mention with these, they have- like, That's paper word. Okay. They have pockets in the back where you can like store some things. I think I actually have like the- Yeah. The identification for this um, sketchbook. I find it really handy to just like shove random paper in there. And then they also do have an elastic band. They're not that strong, but because this one like completely snapped off and doesn't work, but uh, this one still has the band which is nice to like keep things closed and together, but they're not that strong of elastic. So just be aware of that. In general, they're not like the most highest quality sketchbooks, but they get the job done. They allow you to draw a ton and just fill up a sketchbook and not feel pressured that you're ruining really nice paper, which I really like about cheap sketchbooks. The next sketchbooks that I really love to use are the Strathmore Sketch sketchbooks. <laughs> They're really great for, it says here that they're really great for like more dry media, media but I tend to like just use like whatever I want in it. But they're really, I feel like they're like a great in-between size between like a small sketchbook and then maybe like a standard size sketchbook. It's seven and three quarter inch by nine and three quarter inch and I just really like that ratio it's just nice but yeah working through this i mainly use working through this i mainly use like a uh, pencil and pen and i think i use a little bit of watercolor actually no i didn't use any watercolor in this never mind but yeah i mainly use like marker pen pencil in both of these and it worked fine uh, once again since it's just sketch paper it's not that thick but i really like the um the smoothness of it it doesn't have that much of a grain it's pretty fine so yeah it, i enjoyed working on it and i think it's just such a great size but yeah i think it's just a great size ratio to work on and it holds pencil and ink very well and i do want to mention a lot of my sketchbooks are bound like this i don't like to use spiral bound because i find that since i do a lot of pencil work it ends up smudging the pencils a lot because the pages are shifting because of like the spiral bound so i find that when i have like bound sketchbooks like this either soft or hard bound it just it, it removes some of that smudging and just keeps the drawings looking nicer for a longer period of time. So yeah, these were the Strathmore sketching sketchbooks. <laughs> kind of redundant, but yeah. Moving on, we have the, the Denik brand style sketchbook. I want to check and see if they still sell them because I haven't seen them in art stores in a while. Let me double check. Okay, they do still sell them, but I'm probably not in these designs. Anyways, you can't see the di designs because I covered it up with stickers, but these Denik sketchbooks, they're like the lay flat sketchbooks. I don't know if I bought them separately or in a pack, but I remember them being very affordable and on the lower end of prices. And they're really great, like I said, with like the previous sketchbook sketchbooks for just like drawing and sketching and maybe some light like watercolor work. But these are really handy if you're like traveling or you're going to class and you just need want to put something like smaller in your bag to like draw and do stuff and plan stuff out. I haven't seen them in art stores recently, but maybe I'm just not looking in the right place. But then again, I haven't bought sketchbooks in a long time either. So they, I, I think I looked online and I think they do still sell them, but most likely not these designs. I'm not sure, but yeah, I just really like how like soft the cover is, how like light and like easy portable they are. So yeah, I really recommend these. And if you're just looking for something to just like pump out a bunch of drawings, these are really great because they're small and don't have a ton of pages. So it's really a great confidence boost if you really want to finish a sketchbook and don't want to be overwhelmed. So yeah, I recommend these. Moving on, this is also Pentallic. This is a hardcover bound sketchbook, which is drawing or sketching paper. I also have a tour of this one up on my channel, but I put this guy through the ringer and kind of holding up. Then again, this book is like four years old now. It was really great to use for just drawing and sketching and plan out of planning out a lot of like AP art stuff in high school. And I find it like a kind of like a one-stop shop. Like this is like your main sketchbook that you put all your ideas in and like these smaller ones are the ones you carry around and do small doodles in. But yeah, this Goliath, I do recommend it. I like the paper. It's very similar to the other papers I've been talking about. Smooth, handles ink, sketching. Um, if you push it enough, it will handle paint, but it will buckle. So yeah, keep that in mind. But yeah, I really like this sketchbook. If you want to see more of it, I'll have it. I'll have the video of the tour linked in this video or in the description. Okay, moving on to the last one, which is my current sketchbook that I'm working in. It is the 
Talon's Art Creation Sketchbook in their largest size. I looked up on Blick if they offer this size and this color, and I haven't seen it in a while. This is like the coral color. So, but you can get this size in like other different colors. But yeah, I've been using this one since February of this year and using it a lot in my draw with me's on this channel and it's been great so far. Uh, I'm not a huge fan of the, the paper texture is fine, but the color is kind of like an off-white color, which is, eh, it kind of works sometimes. I know it sometimes makes it hard to like photograph drawings for Instagram and all that sort of stuff because it looks super yellow and warm but then again it functions well I'm kind of able to push it to do like acrylic gouache and some watercolor throughout it yeah I've been enjoying it so far I think it's been a bit of a struggle of, for me to like get used to the size of it because it's huge. It's, I don't know how big it is. I can't remember how big it is. I'll have the dimensions right here, but it it's definitely a big thing to carry around and have on my desk. And I don't know if I'd buy this one again, but I do like working in it. I find it really great to just have a big piece of paper to draw on and improve skills. So I don't know. So I, it's a good sketchbook. I like it and I'm, coming up on the last couple of pages here so hopefully i'll have a tour of this one soon so make sure to subscribe if you want to see that and hopefully some more draw with me content in the sketchbook as well but yeah it's a good sketchbook i like it um it is on the pricier side i believe um i got it at an art store for like some ridiculous price like 16 dollars or something which is what i rarely spend on a sketchbook but i was like oh, this color is so cute and it was like the end of the semester and i was like I gotta treat myself. I'm gonna get a new sketchbook. It, it's fun to get something like cuter and nicer every once in a while, but I usually tend to stick towards like cheaper things. So I probably won't get it again due to the price, but it's a good sketchbook and yeah, that's it. Oh my gosh, I need a break. <laughs> we just went through the sketchbooks and that took so long. Okay, I took a sip of coffee. Let's move on. What else do we have to go through? Okay, drawing supplies. Now with drawing supplies, I, with traditional drawing supplies, I haven't been using a ton of variety lately with what I'm using. Um, so I'm just gonna pick out the ones that I mainly use instead of like going through every single thing in this. The ones that I mainly use in videos nowadays and what I find myself like using more these days in my sketchbook. So what we first have here is a pencil, Prismacolor Verithin pencil. It's like a, like, it's not a colored pencil because it's not, it's not that, uh, how do I say this? It's not that dark. It's great for doing like underdrawings or just having something colored to sketch with. I really love this color cause it's like a reddish brown type color. I think I have an example of it. Yeah, like right here, this is this pencil and I really love just like sketching with like a different color just to like make things fun. And I find that also using this for like underdrawings for like gouache studies or gouache paintings in my sketchbook, it's a lot less harsh than regular graphite and it doesn't really smear as much into the paint. So yeah, that's the Prismacolor Verithin. And they all, they come in like a ton of different colors. I just really like to get the warm red. Okay, so as I was editing the video, I realized I didn't even explain the pencil that I mainly use or a ballpoint pen. So I'm just going to explain that right here. I've been using the Bic mechanical pencil for forever. I grew up using them in school and they've somehow stuck in uh, my art practice and just sketching in my sketchbook. I, They're just... I don't know, they've always been like present in my life. There's always a stash of them in my room or in our like family closet. It, I love them so much. I use them to draw all the time. I'll sometimes use like a regular, a more traditional drawing pencil, like either like a six, either like a 4B, 5B, 6B, like all, a lot of the softer ones I really like. But yeah, these big mechanical pencils, they've always stood by my side and I love them so much. But yeah, I can't believe I forgot to like explain it, but yeah. Those are my favorite. And then as well, I use a ballpoint pen a lot of the times or like a office gel pen, like those just standard pens for sketching and making notes in my sketchbook. So those are also a option or those are also some ideas for you if you're looking for like cheaper um, options and yeah. You can draw with anything basically. Actually, let me keep my sketchbook out because a lot of these, I use the supplies in it. So the next one is my new favorite. It is the Micron, the Pigma Micron pen in the 01 size. I really love these because I'm trying to practice like my ink work 
and it's just like the thinness of it is just just right it gets it nice and crispy so let me see if i can find some drawings using this yeah this whole page well mostly these are pencil but this whole page has been drawing with this pen and i just find it just like the perfect line variety and line width i can get with it and i really I just love it. It's my new favorite and I want to continue to use it because I am not confident at all with line work and I hope it gets me to the place I want to be with my line work because I enjoy using it so much. Okay, next one is... Okay, I'm gonna introduce these both together. These are the Tombow, I think... Yeah, Furunosuke? Yeah, the Tombow like brush pens and there's like a green one and a blue one and I think... I can't really remember the difference. I believe the green one is like thinner and then the blue one like is more flexible and thicker. Like this one has a harsher tip and this one's more flexible. I really like these for getting thicker lines or doing gesture drawing. I cannot find an example for these pens. Oh, here we go. Here's some of the sketching with a pen. I think it's uh, Joel, AKA Pedro, Last of Us. Yeah, I just love to use them to sketch. I don't use a lot of like finished I don't use a lot of ink in my finished work, my finished traditional work because it's mainly painting like gouache or like acrylic so I don't use a ton of lines but I really love to use ink in my sketchbooks to practice drawing and line confidence and yeah I just really like these for getting line variety and they're more sort of a brush pen compared to the micron so yeah I like these. These are a bit more expensive, I believe, but I think they're worth the money. They last a pretty long time. And if you're gentle with the nibs, they'll last even longer. So yeah. And then some erasers I have. I, I have no idea what this brand is. I'm gonna try and look up like a similar brand that looks like it. I think I remember what the packaging looks like. So I'm gonna have that link down below, but I have no idea what this eraser is, but I like it. Um, this I just bought because I've been doing more ink work and I've been using it to pick up graphite underneath like some of these pen drawings that I did I did like a sketch first like these two um, strawberry shortcake inspired characters I sketched them out first and then I lifted up a lot of the pencil with this and I find it super helpful no eraser shavings and it doesn't smudge as much and then also if you're just trying to like lighten up the line so you can like paint on top or just do some ink work on top that's also super helpful so yeah this is i feel like it's like general brand like the charcoal brand but it's like i'll also have a link down below i'm so sorry i completely forgot what this is but yeah so it's just a needed eraser you can find them anywhere for pretty cheap like i think i got this for like a dollar so yeah i really like this now i do use markers sometimes um, I mainly use, let me go get them. So these are the markers I use typically in my sketchbook. I don't use markers a lot for finished work. Like I said, I'm, I'm mainly a painter, so I use gouache or like acrylic or digital painting, but Art X sent me these acrylic markers and I found them really great to use in sketchbooks to just have fun and add like a, another dimension to your work. You can also apply this to different surfaces other than paper, so you can decorate things that way. I have a draw with me of me drawing some mermaids using these markers and I really enjoy using them and some examples in my sketchbook the mermaids that I was talking about yeah these guys I was able to get with those acrylic markers and they're just fun they just bring like a whole pop of color to my sketchbook they're similar to Posca but they have a brush nib so you're really able to get some details in there so I really like these acrylic markers, they're great. And how did that happen? Bro, I just like smudged something all over my desk. Okay, never mind. And then the most expensive piece de resistance. Uh, no, it's just Crayola markers. I find that really similar to how I use the paint markers, just like bringing a pop of color to my sketchbook spreads or blocking something out. Um, these really mini ones are great because you can like shove them in your pencil bag and it doesn't take up a lot of room, but I have these mini ones. I have like the long skinny ones and then I have like the thick ones and yeah, Crayola markers that don't underestimate their power. They're pretty great. So I definitely recommend this if you just want like a cheap marker to spruce up your sketchbook a little bit and have fun. But yeah. 
And yeah, Art Art X acrylic markers. I don't think they're that expensive for a whole set. I believe it was like thirty dollars for a whole set, which is pretty great for the quality of these markers. They have pretty opaque color and they're pretty colors. So I I recommend these as well as. Um, Crayola, they're like the cheapest, so I definitely recommend these if you're on a tighter budget. Okay, moving on. What else do we have? Oh yes, color pencils. So these color pencils are very special because I've had them for probably... I don't know how long. I got these in high school. Maybe... No, I got these like in middle school. So coming up to 10 years owning this set of pencils. Um, I went through a period of not really using them, but I'm using them again. And I find the their colors are really great, strong pigments, really great quality. I love to use them in my sketchbook to like um, emphasize some drawings or just add a touch of color as well as, you can see how short some are getting, um, as well as like when I finish like watercolor painting or gouache painting, I love to like draw on top of the the gouache or the watercolor and add in some finer details. I do have to say with these color pencils, the unfortunate thing is that if you drop them like once or twice, the core immediately breaks because like the the pigment is so soft and it's such a strong pack of, uh, it's such, such an intense like pack of color. So uh, some of these pencils, I know that if I try and like sharpen them, the core automatically falls out so it's a bit difficult with sharpening them and I have to like kind of dole them out a, a bit, but the color is really great, it's really strong, it's bright, vibrant, yeah, and I feel like a lot of people use these. They are, I don't know what their price is like right now, I got these years ago for like Christmas, but I, I do think Prismacolor can be a bit on the pricier side so I'm sure there's like I'm sure there's like less expensive options out there and I'd love to try out some more because a lot of, uh, I'm running out of a lot of colors. These are what I have left. And some of these are actual like additions to this set that I bought like separately. So I don't know, I'll look into it. I haven't been using them that much, but I really love to use them for, like I said, sketchbook work or final touches on gouache or watercolor work. So yeah, colored pencils. And once again, tried and true, Crayola has some good color pencils. If you just layer them up or just use them to pop out some drawings, I they're pretty good. They're not as strong in pigment as Prismacolor, but they, they do the job, so that's also a great option. Okay, moving on, we have gouache paints. Now, this is the section I really want to expand my collection of or try out new things because I really like gouache and I've been using it a ton in my sketchbook, so let me go get my gouache paints. So primarily, A, get it? I use a Holbein acrylic gouache. It comes, they, they have a primary set that comes like in this little box and it contains primary yellow, primary cyan, primary magenta, primary black, primary white. In addition to Holbein's regular acrylic gouache in this white color because I use a lot of white when mixing these colors and I've been really enjoying them. I use it a lot for sketchbook spreads if I'm painting. I'll show some examples. So this page, I used uh, both the acrylic gouache and some of the colored pencil to get those details. And I really enjoy the color. I think it's great, it's vibrant, lays on really great. And then this spread as well, just really vibrant colors. I really enjoy working with them. They're pretty opaque if you add white and yeah I just have a lot of fun with them and I'd love to get more colors of this or try more from the Holbein brand but if you guys have any specific gouache recommendations let me down, know down below I'm very much interested in expanding my arsenal of gouache paint so yeah let me down, know down below as for the brushes that I typically use with gouache they're kind of like old brushes that I've used for years that still work. I'm gonna do my best with trying to find the brands, but yeah, I have like a whole like a uh, bunch of like brushes that I have no idea what the brand of. They don't have any name on them, but these specific ones that I really love to use to paint with is the Winsor & Newton Cotman. I think it's the round number four. I really love the tip of it. It's soft, it's like this perfect shape to get like it doesn't get fine details but it I don't know I like it I like to use it a lot and then we have the I don't know what this is 
I think it's the Royal 5 Soft Grip Brush. It's pretty frayed, but I love using it for bigger swaths of laying down color. So these two paired together, I really love and I use the most. I don't, I have no idea what they are price-wise because I must have bought them years ago, but they still work for me and I've saved money, which is keep on using them. So it's, it works and I enjoy using them. And if you just need an idea of what to get, I'll have these linked down below if I can find them, and I hope they're at a good price. I don't know, with inflation now, so... But yeah, this is what I use for gouache painting. As for my gouache palette, I use a glass palette that I also use. It's like a larger version of this for my acrylic painting, and it's just a homemade uh, palette. Lays flat. Um, it's basically taking two um, panes of glass and um, covering them with gesso, and then sticking them together and letting them dry, and then putting duct tape on the corners. I'll have a tutorial linked down below on how to make these. I find they're really cheap, take a little bit of work to make them, but I think it's worth it. I do want to look into getting a ceramic palette though, because while I find this works for acrylic paint, I find that the amount of gouache paint that I use is minimal to where it dries super fast. And I think with having a palette with wells, like a ceramic palette with like dips in it would be better since gouache is a lot more water-based than acrylic so or i use a lot more water with gouache than acrylic so i find that would be more helpful in conserving paint and making it last longer so if you have any recommendations for ceramic palettes let me know down below but yeah this is what i use it's nice and small it fits right next to my sketchbook as i'm painting and it works yeah and i have cute cherry duct tape so that makes me happy Okay, moving on, we have the acrylic section, which I am very- I'm a lot more versed on acrylics than gouache. I mainly use Golden Brand acrylics, as you can see, uh, the heavy body golden acrylics. These colors are really thick and opaque and apply very nicely to the canvas. They are on the pricey side, but they reduce um, the amount of layering you have to do, typically with like cheaper paints, to get like a solid paint application. So. They're really great quality, you get really vibrant colors, and I just really enjoy using them and I've used them for years. I mainly recommend like these primary colors if you want to start off with a good set and don't want to like break your bank account by like buying all these paints because it does get really expensive, especially now with everything getting expensive, so. And if you don't have the money to get like the high-end like heavy body, you can still get away with getting like I think it's, I think I have some, yeah, these Liquitex Basics paints, these, I started off using these for a couple years, and they worked perfectly, like, um, I painted, like, this Magnolia painting for my grandmother with these, and it turned out really great, and it shows that you don't need, like, the most expensive paints to paint, but, but if you have a little bit more money, or if you really do a lot of acry acrylic painting in your profession, or your work, or in your hobby, Golden Heavy Body is really great, and... Yeah, both work fine. Um, with Golden, it's just a lot easier to paint with since it's so opaque and the color is so much like richer and thicker, but these work great as well if you just build them up. Like I said before, like the nicest, you don't have to like the greatest art supplies to make like the best paintings or the best drawings. It's really how you use it and um, I don't know, you using it, it's all up to you, so yeah. I started off using these basic Liquitex uh, paints. They're a lot cheaper then um, they're a lot cheaper. Like these were like five bucks each when I got them. And then these are around like nine or 10 or even these big guys can get up to like $15 per tube, which is a lot of money just to spend on paints, which is concerning. But these are great to start off with or just continue to use in um, your paintings. I know I have a lot that I use for underpaintings to just get like a wash of color down. And I like to mix these with my regular paints. So it's really great when you want more variety or only have like a few like really high quality paints to mix them with this and it works great. It works fine. So yeah. But for golden paints specifically, the heavy body ones. But yeah, the main colors, if you want to get this brand of paints that I suggest starting off with are just like your regular primary colors. So that's Cadmium Yellow Light, Cadmium Red Medium Hue, Cobalt Blue Hue, and then Titanium White, as uh, Bob Ross would say. And then also a Mars Black. I don't use a ton of black in my painting, but it really helps to like desaturate or dole out colors. So 
yeah so those are the primaries i really like and then some extra colors i really love are quinacridone magenta i use that a lot as an underpainting for my more recent paintings as well as this teal i have this really great yellow ochre as well as like the titan buff and then this really great light blue violet i need to get more of this and also liquitex has really good heavy body paints as well they're like on par with golden i believe they might be like slightly cheaper i'm not sure but I use like everything interchangeably, like whatever I can get my hands on, I'll just like mush it together and make it work. So I'm not too picky, but great colors. I'll, I'll have like all these linked down below if you're interested. And then this is the same palette that I use for the gouache, just bigger pieces of glass. As you can see, this one has been a bit more war torn than the other one. I use this one constantly and it's definitely seen better days, but that just means it's well loved and well used and I really like to use it for my acrylic painting and as you can see I failed to clean it off after my last painting session but all you have to do is just like put some water on there let it sit for a moment and then scrape it off with a palette knife and then speaking of palette knives this one I believe I got from Blick I think they have like a wide variety of palette knives and I can't I can't tell what shape or number this is but if you just like scroll through the website I'll, I'll have it linked down below if I can find it but yeah just a simple palette knife to like scrape things off and to also mix up your paint and then my, my favorite brush uh brand this this brand was recommended to me during college as I was learning acrylic painting so really haven't tried anything other than that but they're kind of like a student grade quality but it's still really great if you learn to like take care of them and really make sure the brush bristles are getting washed so as you can tell these are like my newer ones see if you can get that my newer ones nice they're still kind of like crazy because i paint crazy but and then these are my older ones because i was not a good brush parent and i when i started off painting i used my brush more as like a pencil and i would like scribble on canvas and while that's great you can get great effects it does affect the bristles of the brush and kind of tears them and bends them and they last for such a long time like i've had these for like i don't know three or four years maybe and then these ones i just got i've had for like almost a year now and as long as you just rinse them every single time you use them and rinse off the paint and use a bit of dish soap in your hand and just scrub them gently and make sure and make sure you're getting all that paint out of the brush i tend to when i like wash them i'll really like scrub them on my hand and make sure it's getting down on the like the roots of the brush and yeah and that's how i keep them clean i just take dish soap it works perfectly with a bit of warm water and just clean them off that way so yeah these simply simmons brush lasts a long time um the specific sizes i have i'll have linked down below because i don't want to like go through all of them but yeah here are all of them but yeah i'll put their like names and numbers right here so i don't have to like speak through them and go through them because i cannot tell what their names and numbers are but yeah, here they are okay thank you future shannon but okay moving on what else do we have oh yes a lot of times when i'm using acrylic paint i use a little something called matte medium so matte medium typically you can use it to Put on top of a finished painting to do like a finish like a matte finish to protect it and seal the painting but you can also use it in the painting process to slow down the drying process and also like thin out colors and make it more liquidy and apply it to the canvas which is super helpful you can get any brand um i've used like off-brand kind of like cheaper varieties of matte medium i haven't really seen a difference i guess archival quality would probably be be why things would be more expensive but um i just have this liquitex brand and i find it works well oh and then i also have charcoal okay guys quick water break everyone take a sip <sighs> okay on to what i do for like underpainting underdrawing type stuff so so typically what i use to draw on canvas to get my sketch down for a painting generally use generals charcoal pencils <laughs> Um, I find they're really great. I typically like to get, um, I typically get like the soft ones, the soft, medium, or hard ones, depending on what type of effect I want to get. And they're just a great quality. They're not that expensive. You can also just get like off-brand ones because I mainly use it for doing underdrawings. It's going to be covered up anyway, so basically use anything. But yeah, I just use some sort of charcoal. Um, it's very messy. You can already see it getting onto my hands, but yeah, I'm gonna go wash my hands and then we'll move on. <laughs> okay, my final uh, painting supply, I believe. Oh wait, I lied. Um, this one is 
gesso so this can be any brand of gesso this is the cheapest one i found the artist loft gesso that works fine but yeah i use gesso in well before i do like acrylic painting to prime my canvas priming your canvas surface is a great way to reduce canvas texture and also keep the canvas from absorbing too much of the paint so you um, you're not having to paint over something a million times just to lay down a thick color. The gessoed surface makes the canvas ready to accept acrylic paint and makes it apply more easily. I typically do two to three coats of gesso and sand in between so there's no bumps or ripples and it just leaves a great surface to both get that charcoal drawing on as well as do your painting. So yeah, this is just Artist Loft brand white gesso. It works great. Furthermore, the actual canvases I work on, I've built my own canvases before, but that was in school when I had access to like staple guns, saws, and stretcher bars, which is also, which is always more affordable and is cheaper to build your own canvases, but not everyone has the facilities and the space to do that. So now I just buy canvas from Michaels or Blick whenever they go on sale. Their Michaels level two or level three gallery wrap canvases are mainly what I like to use and I think the cowboy painting I'm working on right now is on a level 3 gallery wrap canvas so they're nice and sturdy but make sure you have somewhere to store your canvases or be willing to like sell original work or have it hanging up uh, but in this economy I don't think a lot of us are selling that many paintings but it can get kind of hectic hectic since Michaels offers up to like 48 by 48 inches which I have and I have a painting that's 48 by 48 and it's currently in our dining room and it's been there so make sure you have the space if you're looking into getting canvas i also recommend like i think it's like strathmore watercolor paper paper like the big like sheets of watercolor paper or just like a heavier paper like stonehenge or something like that if you don't want to use canvases to paint on you can still like gesso on top of them and paint them and takes up a lot less space and you don't have like a ton of canvases in the corner of your room so I myself might be looking into that because I don't have a ton of space so but for canvases I usually get Michaels level 2 level 3 or Blick canvases. As for my easels, um, it's another Blick product. I purchased this easel at the beginning of this year. It is the Blick Studio Medium Duty H-Frame easel. It's a great quality easel and really affordable compared to like similar brands, but honestly, if I could go back, I would pick the light version since the top clamp is able to go down further. The medium frame that I have now, the top clamp only adjusts to five, five foot, six inches. So a lot of the paintings I typically work on are to the medium to small size so it doesn't fare well for painting sitting down or I'm also a short person so it doesn't always work standing up but it's still a great quality easel and it was easy to put together and I know I can make it work. I do have a table easel for like smaller work so if you don't have a lot of room or like to work small that could be great as well. I'll try and find the brand of mine and link it down below but I know that Blick has some great small like desk size easel as well as probably Michael's so yeah you can also look into getting that okay now I gotta clean this up and move on to pastels okay so now on to soft chalk pastels which I have a lot of pastel work and people always ask like what pastels do I use so I typically use Prismacolor new pastel soft chalk pastels I'm kind of stepping away from pastel work sort of it's difficult to store and it's really messy but I really love to use it for figurative and life drawing and doing live portraits so I'll probably mainly use them in a practice setting rather than actual finish works I also use some pastel pencils but yeah this pack of like how many is it this pack of 48 is really great i do find that some of the colors are like really hard to use like the actual like pastel is like really hard so that's something to be wary of with these prismacolor pastels some of them kind of feel like too difficult to use like i don't know how to explain it like they're just like really hard and it's hard to lay down the color so Keep that in mind when looking for pastels but i also have these pastel pencils that i like to use for detail work and also this kind of sucks but prismacolor new pastels they used to sell them individually and it was super great because you could get all those great um browns and like muted colors and you didn't have to buy whole packs you could make your own palette 
super great. And then they discontinued the line like last year. So it's been difficult trying to like get myself to use them more since I can't individually buy colors that I need. So that's been great. Thanks for that Prismacolor. But <laughs> I also use these Prismacolor pencils. I believe these are the Stabilo Carbofello Pastel pencils. And I use these, I, I typically use these for underdrawings or doing some like detail work on top of pastel work. <clears throat> I'm kind of salty about pastels right now, specifically Prismacolor. I know there's a great brand by, I don't know if it's like Selenier or, I can't remember, but it'd be cool to try those out one day, but I don't typically use pastels that much anymore. Um, I definitely want to do more studio, like figure drawing work at like local art studios, hopefully. So hopefully I can use them there. And yeah, but yeah, here are all my like separate pastel colors that they used to sell on their own, but they don't anymore, which is great. Also with my pastel work, I the pastel paper I typically like to use is the Canson Mitants pastel paper. They come in a lot of different colors. My only gripe with the paper is that they only go up to like 19 inches by 25 inches, and it would be great to have like larger sizes to work on, but Oh well, um, they come in a lot, like, I really like a lot of the colors and it works well. As well as I use a, like, a masonite drawing board, um, mainly for life drawing and doing any, like, doing any, like, pastel paperwork like this. It's sturdy, reliable, and has lasted about three years of studio classes in college, so I see that as a win. I have no idea what the brand is, but as long as it's sturdy, it should get the job done. I'll have one linked from Blick that I hope is the same brand I have, but yeah, I find that having like a big sturdy drawing board for pastel work or figurative work is super helpful. I also want to quickly go over some like mini watercolor palettes that I have. I don't typically use watercolor a ton because a lot of my sketchbook paper doesn't really hold watercolor that well, but I definitely want to get back into it. And these are just some sets I've collected over the years. I do feel like this is like the best like travel set that I have. It's I believe it's the Windsor and Newton Windsor and Newton Windsor and Newton Cotman watercolor set, and I think it comes with like a brush. Yeah, it comes with a brush and a palette of colors, and I've enjoyed using this. I probably need to clean it up, but yeah, I find this really great to use as a watercolor set. And these are some cheaper options, I believe. These are the Koi watercolors. I really love the pan size of this one and the little sponges on the side, but this also works. I do remember finding them a bit grainy sometimes when I'd use them, but they were great starting out with watercolor. And I believe this is also Koi watercolors, just like a smaller set, even smaller. Yeah, this is so old. Oh my gosh. But yeah, these were great. And that squeak. Oh my gosh. <laughs> But yeah, these were great as like starting out and I typically don't do a lot of watercolor, like official watercolor work. So they're great for like sketchbook work and just getting some washes down. But yeah, these are the palettes that I like. So I'll have them linked down below respectively. But yeah, cool. Moving on to the last section, finally, um, we have like all my digital art drawing software things. So first I have my iPad, which is, <laughs> I literally have my script right here. So you guys can read along with me. Um, so first I have my iPad, which is the iPad Pro 11 inch third generation. I bought it at the end of 2021 with some like scholarship money I had and it wound up being around like a thousand dollars I think based on the storage and the specs that I got on it but it's been one of the best purchases I've ever made and it's improved my digital art a lot and it's so transportable and easy to whip out when I have to draw or paint but don't want to bring out a lot of supplies. I use Procreate and I've been really enjoying using it and and it was a more comfortable way to sketch, create illustrations, and I don't see myself getting rid of it as part of my art routine anytime soon. Procreate has a really simple interface compared to a lot of other drawing programs, so I think it's a great it's great for beginner artists who have access to an iPad. So yeah, I've been really enjoying this as a drawing tool and yeah, I'll continue to use it in my process. We, moving on, we have this lovely drawing tablet here. This is the Huion Canvas Pro 16 graphics tablet. It, I think it retails for about $369. It's a really great smaller investment for a display tablet. I know that like $369, not a small amount of money. That's a lot of money, but compared to other display tablets, it's really great for the price. Um, it's the only one I've used, so I don't really have anything to compare it to, but 
I love how there's more um, affordable screen tablets nowadays other than Wacom. It's a great size for my desk and I find it easy to work with and what more can you ask for? It's pretty great. And I think I was able to get it cheaper through Amazon so I'll try and find a link down below to get you guys the best deal if you're interested but yeah. But if you really want to find something cheaper, I have my old Wacom into a pen tablet that I've had since like, I don't know how long, probably like middle school. But this is, this was like 50 or $60 and it works perfectly fine. Um, it's not a screen display tablet as you can see, but just has a pen and you can um, look directly up at the screen and calibrate it that way. But yeah, it's a great affordable option if you um, don't want a display tablet or you don't want to spend that much money or you're brand new to digital art, I really recommend it. Um, I used it starting out, so yeah, it's a great like baby step to more um, loftier purchases if you're not entirely sure of what type of art you like to make. It is so dusty, oh my god. It'd be fun to like try and use it to create an art piece now because I'm probably way out of practice with like drawing down below and looking up at the screen, but yeah. It's great. It's cute. It's little. You can decorate it with like little stickers. It has hotkey buttons. I don't even know if they sell these anymore. So if I can't find the exact one, I can find like a similar model if they have like a newer model because this is old. But yeah, cute. And then we have my actual like PC, this whole setup. Um, my brother helped me build my own computer. I'm not exactly that versed in like what I use to build it, what brands that I got, I can't really remember, but building your own PC, especially as an artist can be really great because you get to customize what you need to run the software that you wanna use. I'll have some links down below with some building resources if you're interested, but yeah, I had some like extra chunk of change of like scholarship money. So I just compiled it into purchasing a computer to be able to make art faster and not like and not use my laptop, which was like dying every single time I open like a single art program. So yeah, building your own PC is a great option. Okay, moving on to like art programs that I use. One of my like most favorite programs I use is Clip Studio Paint. I'll just pull up like a work in progress I have right now. But yeah, Clip Studio is like one of my favorite, maybe my, like my fully like favorite, maybe like my fully favorite drawing and painting program. Um, I actually have, I actually have the original packaging for like the original license I bought when it used to be called Manga Studio. So I have the Manga Studio 5 disc and everything. Oh my goodness, it's so crazy. But yeah, I've been using this for years, if you couldn't tell. It's really great for doing like ink work, for painting, for comics, and I I don't know if you're able to buy like a single license right now or if you're like a new user you have to buy a subscription, but I just bought the single license years ago and I've been using it ever since and I really like it and I do love using Procreate a lot to draw, but I really love using Clips U paint to <laughs> paint and like since it's on my PC it takes it has a lot more power in working on bigger artworks and it's easier to view the paintings on my larger screen and it just works that way for me. Next I have Adobe Photoshop 2021. Um, I use it mainly for post-production or photo editing but I used it for like one online painting class and it worked pretty well. Um, before Clip had, before Clip Studio had the liquify tool, I would use Photoshop to, I would use the liquify tool in Photoshop to manipulate a drawing or a painting, but now since Clip Studio does have liquify, I don't really need to do that anymore. It is expensive, um, since it's like a subscription now, it's like a monthly payment, but I'm only able to use it because my, um, mom has access to the Adobe Suite for free with her work, so I don't really, um, have to pay for it, I can use her license, but I do know of Affinity Pro, which my professor in college recommended to us as a great cheaper one-time purchase option as a photo editor rather than paying monthly for Adobe. Once again, it's called Affinity Pro. I've never used it, but I do want to look into it further um, when I inevitably can't use my mom's license anymore, but yeah. I don't use Photoshop a ton for drawing or painting. I don't really like it as a drawing or painting software, but I know that you can get some really great work out of it. I do want to mention Krita as a free um, drawing and painting software. 
it's I used it starting off with the Wacom tablet that I have and I, it did everything I needed it to as a beginner and I'm pretty sure it's still a strong drawing and painting program and it's completely free online to download so I really recommend that if you want something free and if you're new to digital art and just want to try it out before purchasing larger packages and stuff like that. I also do have Corel Painter 2022. I got it for a discount price as a student and it was like a one-time payment so so that's great and I used it mainly to get really realistic painting te texture with digital art. Um, there's an amazing feature in the program and this is why I mainly have the program but it's called apply surface texture so if you open up a photoshop document in Corel Painter you can achieve like a really like authentic looking painting texture because it'll read the individual brush strokes in photoshop as brush strokes in in Corel Painter and it just applies this texture and it's really great and I love it. Um, I do want to experiment more with it since you can get really great traditional um, material looking type things and yeah and just use it more in general since I did buy it. But yeah one of the main points is that it can open Photoshop documents so that's also great if you work across platforms. Whew. And yeah, that's it. That's everything I use. I hope you guys find this video helpful in finding art supplies that work for you or if you're wanting to try something new. And I just want to remind you guys again that you don't need the best paints, the best pencils, or the best tablet to make good art. Most of the sketching I do is with a ballpoint pen or a cheap mechanical pencil with cheap sketchbooks and I make it work for me. Better supplies may be easier to work with, but it won't automatically make your art better or immediately improve your skills. Also, I wanted to mention to try and be mindful with what you buy and how you'll use it. I try to reduce wasting money on buying supplies I'll only use once or twice. And I try to use a material and run out of it before I purchase new ones to reduce material waste and my supply storage getting too big and hard to manage. You can also try giving gently used supplies to a friend or a younger family member who is interested in art instead of throwing it away or letting it collect dust and just not using it. Not every supply is going to be your favorite, but it might be someone else's. You never know. But yeah. Good luck to all of you in your own art journeys and make sure to comment down below your favorite art supplies or recommendations. I would love to hear about them and also don't forget to enter the giveaway over on my Instagram. Okay guys, drink some water, stretch, and I'll see you in next week's video. Bye!